Imagine we're building a component in React and we want to return multiple elements, but here's the trick. We don't want to add any unnecessary divs to the DOM that could mess with our layout. That's where React fragments come in handy. Check this out. We can wrap our greeting messages inside a React fragment, and it will group them together seamlessly, without the extra baggage of a wrapper element. This way, we give a proper welcome to the users without cluttering the DOM. Cool, right? Did you know you can also use empty tags as shorthand for less than fragment greater than? It's super neat if you want to group components without adding extra nodes to the DOM. Here, the post function uses these shorthand tags to wrap post title and post body, making the code cleaner and avoiding unnecessary divs or spans in the output. So next time you have elements that just need to stick together, remember these handy empty brackets. When rendering a list in React, it's crucial to assign a unique key to each item. This ensures that React can manage state and DOM updates efficiently. Check out how we use less than fragment key equals item id greater than to encapsulate our definition terms and descriptions. Notice we can't use the shorthand less than greater than for fragments here since we need to pass in that key. This lets React keep track of each term and description pair, no matter how many we have in our glossary. Nested fragments are super handy when you are juggling a ton of components. Think of them like organizing your closet with boxes inside boxes. In this user profile component, See how we've grouped the profile picture and username inside one fragment, which sits in the header. Then, there's another set in the content, where posts and the sidebar get their own little space. And within the sidebar? We've got followers list and trending tags, each in their cozy fragment. It's all about keeping things tidy and manageable, just like sorting your socks and shirts into the right drawers. Hey! Check out this neat way to mix and match text with HTML elements using React fragments. Inside this welcome message function, we're creating a greeting that includes a header, some plain text, and a paragraph, all lumped together without any extra wrappers like divs. This keeps our DOM really clean because it avoids unnecessary nesting. React just groups them together under one roof without adding any extra nodes to the page, making it super tidy and efficient. Cool. Right? Fragments can be stored in variables and passed as props. Imagine you have two buttons, confirm and cancel. You can group them using a fragment and assign them to a variable named dialog buttons. Later, if you're creating a dialog component, you can pass these buttons as a prop. So, when you use the dialog in your app component, it renders with its content, are you sure? Along with both confirm and cancel buttons underneath, ready for user interaction, Using keys the wrong way with fragments is pretty common. For example, if you put a key on the shorthand syntax with those angle brackets, it just won't work. Check this out. The correct way to use keys is by wrapping your items with the full less than fragment greater than tag and then adding the key there. Just like I'm showing you with this color list. Now with the key parked in the right spot, React can keep track of each fragment in a list, and it will work smoothly. Hey. Have you ever used React DevTools to check out fragments? What's super cool is that even though fragments let us group components together, they don't actually show up as HTML elements when you're inspecting the page. So, if you wrap elements like a heading and paragraph within a fragment, just like in our example component, you won't see an extra less than div greater than or anything. It keeps the DOM clean and uncluttered, keeping only the essentials in the HTML structure. React magic, right? Understanding how state behaves between fragments and their children is insightful. Picture this. We've got a counter in a parent component, controlled by a button. Now, even when we group child component inside a fragment, it still flawlessly taps into the parent state, showing the updated count each time we click. It's like passing a secret note in class. The message remains the same, no matter how it's folded or passed along. Mindful use of fragments can lead to performance benefits. You see, cramming unnecessary nested fragments or extra wrappers into our components could bulk up the DOM tree, slowing things down. Take a look here. The first snippet is cluttered with nested fragments, but if we strip those away like in the second example, we get a lean structure that's quicker to render. More efficient and cleaner, right?
keeping our DOM tree trim can really keep things snappy.